Number 10, Bragg Road, Saratoga. The big thicket in southeast Texas is a dense forested area that runs along the Alabama border, and there are very few roads that cut through it. One of the most infamous is Bragg Road. In 1904, the road was built as a rail line to connect the now abandoned town of Bragg to the now thriving Saratoga. While the rails have long since been torn up, some ghostly reminders of the past still remain. When you drive down this lonely eight mile long dirt road at night, you, like thousands of others before you, are sure to see what are known as the ghost lights, basketball sized orbs of light that float and dance through the air, even changing in color according to some. There are a few stories on what these lights actually are. The most popular story is that a tragedy occurred on a midnight train run. The conductor, sleep deprived from a long journey through the state, needed some fresh air to wake himself up. He stuck his head out the window, and in a freak accident, he was decapitated by a tree. And now his spirit is wandering the road, searching for his lost head. The other prevailing theory Theory is that the light is a ghostly lantern belonging to a groom whose bride left him at the altar. He went searching for her in the forest at night, but has still never found her to this day. Number 9. Baker Hotel, Mineral Wells Mineral Wells is known for its, you guessed it, mineral rich water. In the 1880s, people would travel from all over Texas to drink some, and it supposedly had healing powers and could cure almost any ailment. And with that kind of tourist attraction, you need somewhere for all of these folks to stay. And so, in 1929, the Baker Hotel was opened. With 14 floors and 450 rooms, it was the biggest hotel for miles, and it used the mineral water as a draw for all sorts of people. To this day, workers and visitors alike find small things missing from their pockets or bags while touring the grounds, and workers have later found them on the floor in the Baker Suite, the room where the owner lived and died. They also report the smell of cigar smoke in the air, another habit of Mr. Baker further proving his presence. But there are also some less friendly spirits here, notably that of the chopped bell who lost his life in a freak elevator accident that saw his top half removed from the bottom half of his body. He's seen floating sans legs and screaming to be made whole again. Workers recommend you stay away, lest you meet the same fate. Known for its programs in engineering, technology, and agriculture, Texas A&M is one of the most highly regarded universities in the state. But the engineering building is home to not only future engineers, but the spirit of a former worker. In 1959, Roy Sims was the foreman for the meat locker in what was then the animal industries building. He was showing his assistant some tips on butchering bacon, and when the assistant stepped out to get them both some coffee, the knife slipped and Sims accidentally sliced his leg, severing his femoral artery in the process. The assistant returned to see Roy bleeding out on the floor and called an ambulance, but it was too late and he passed away. Students and faculty alike report strange happenings in the building to this day. Noises and crashes, cool breezes when all the windows and doors are shut, and even objects moving or being out of place. And many attribute this to the ghost of Roy Sims just trying to get back to work. Number seven, Lake Highlands High School, Dallas. Imagine being back in high school, and during a rehearsal for the school play, the lights suddenly go out, and when they come back on, costumes have moved, props have crashed to the floor, and you see a ghostly apparition rise back up to the rafters. This is exactly what some students and faculty have reported at the Dallas High School. Reportedly, the ghost is that of a former student, Elizabeth, who took her own life jumping from the roof of the auditorium. While many attribute the cold spots and strange noises to the wind, there is no denying that there was a student named Elizabeth who attended the school around the same time the urban legend takes place and passed away, though the cause remains unclear. Number six on our list, the Ritz Theater in Corpus Christi. While there are no accounts of specific deaths associated with what was once South Texas's most beautiful theater, there are certainly enough ghostly happenings to make anyone's skin crawl. Paranormal investigators have reported that while walking through the now crumbling building, you can feel cold spots, hear voices, and see orbs floating through the air, some of which they've actually been able to catch on camera. Perhaps these are spirits who never managed to move on, or maybe they're happy right where they are, enjoying a pleasant night out at the theater in the afterlife. We won't know until somebody asks. Number 5. Jefferson Hotel Jefferson. Originally built in 1851 as a cotton warehouse, the Jefferson Hotel has had haunting stories for decades. To this day, workers who were once skeptical of spirits have been converted to believers after dishes have gone flying, phantom footsteps were heard, and the front switchboard lit up as though the rooms were talking to each other, even when the hotel was closed to guests. Many attribute this to the ghost of Elizabeth, common ghost name I guess, who took her own life in the hotel after her soon-to-be husband sent a note that he would not be coming to the wedding. This has been very 
verified by newspapers to have happened in the 1870s, and there have been sightings of a woman in white roaming the halls of the hotel ever since. Number four. Hendley Row, Galveston. One of the oldest still operating commercial buildings in the city, Hendley Row has seen many occupants throughout its time. Most notably, it was a watchtower during the American Civil War. Some have reported a soldier on the roof of the building at night watching out for Union Army members. There are also many spirits who appear soaked and wet from the 1900 storm that they and 12,000 others lost their lives in. However, my favorite story from this building is actually more recent. The manager of the market was gifted a photo of Dr. Wilbur, a man who had lived and died in the buildings many, many years before. And they decided to hang it in the market as a historical artifact. When Hurricane Ike hit the city in 2008 and left the building in 10 feet of water, damaging so much of the property, the picture remained unharmed despite falling in the water. During their annual Day of the Dead celebration, the photo is included on the altar, along with many other objects and candles. With a three-person rotation to ensure it's done, the candles are extinguished at night. Yet every year, the candles are mysteriously already burning the next morning. Number three, Haunted Train Tracks, San Antonio. On a dark night in 1936, at the rail crossing on Shane Road, just outside of San Antonio, a tragedy occurred which would rock the state to its core. An after hours event at the local elementary school had many students staying late that night, and the school bus service was diverted to later in the evening. When it was time to go, students loaded up and headed home. Unfortunately for some, this would be their last ride. The bus had been working better than ever all evening, the bus driver noted, and suddenly it stalled out on the rail tracks. The driver tried and tried to restart the vehicle, but it was no use. Then suddenly, a train appeared. Its lamp must have been out, and it was too late to move the bus, even if it was working. The driver began to carry students off the bus as fast as he could, but then the bus was hit by the train side on, and the driver was thrown from the window. Ten students survived, but many others didn't. After recovering from his injuries and leaving the hospital weeks later, the bus driver got in his car and returned to the rail crossing that night. Haunted by grief, he drove his car onto the tracks, turned it off, and hurled his keys into the night, determined to take his own life. And when he saw the train charging down the tracks, he suddenly felt the car rolling forward, all the way off the tracks and out of harm's way. When he inspected his car, he saw multiple sets of small handprints on the back, perhaps those of the students, not wishing for his life to be lost in the same way theirs had. Number 2. Hotel Galvez Galveston. After the devastating hurricane in 1900 that left many dead and much of the town destroyed, Galveston decided to rebuild. And with that came the Hotel Galvez. Many spirits are said to be lurking the grounds, even to this day, but the most infamous of them all is Audra. In 1952, she was staying in room 501, while her fiancé was out at sea working on a cargo vessel. When news came from the company that their ship had sunk and all hands on board were lost, Audra decided to end her life in the hotel room that night. But a few days later, her betrothed returned to the hotel. Reports had been wrong, and he had survived the shipwreck, and elated to see his fiance, he threw open the doors to room 501 and saw her body. Distraught, he then took his own life, laying next to her on the bed. And finally, we reach your number one most suggested haunted place in Texas, Goatman's Bridge. This bridge in Denton once led to the homestead of a farmer, the Goatman, who was renowned for the quality of his farm's milk, cheeses, and meat. The former owner of the land never saw any such success while he operated the farm, and in a booze-fueled fit of jealousy, he attacked the farmer, put a rope around his neck, and threw him from the side of the bridge. He then returned to the homestead and burned it to the ground, taking the lives of the family and the livestock. When he returned to the bridge to check on his gruesome handiwork, he looked below only to see an empty noose. He then heard three loud metal clangs, like someone was knocking on the bridge. And then suddenly behind him, a large, ghostly man with a goat for a head appeared, put a noose around his neck, and threw him over the side of the bridge, taking revenge for himself and his family. Now they say that if you visit the old Alton Bridge at night and knock three times, you too will see the goat man but be warned, he does not like to be disturbed. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Grand Union Hotel. This hotel resides in Fort Benton, which is one of the oldest towns in Montana, and it was first established by the French-American fur traders Auguste and Pierre Choteau in 1846. While much of the town has been dismantled by the years, the Grand Union Hotel still stands, and it is among the oldest in the town, with its initial build taking place in 1882. There are many ghost stories and haunting tales 
details that have come from this hotel, but I will tell you one of my favorites. Apparently, this hotel might be the home to a paranormal horse. A phantom horse. It really doesn't get more interesting than that. People have reported hearing the stomping of hooves, and they believe that this horse belonged to a cowboy who, one night after having a few too many pops, tried to ride his horse up the main staircase before he was shot by the hotel manager. In our number 9 spot today, we have 2223 Montana Ave in Billings. This address seems a little suspiciously specific, but the story behind this haunting is quite a tragic accident. In 1945, on December 8th, an airplane that was transporting World War II soldiers who were returning home from war ended up crashing in a field east of Rocky Mountain College. 17 servicemen and two pilots lost their lives in this crash, while there were only four survivors. This is of course a lot of people, and at the time, it was too many for the morgue to handle at one time, so the majority of the bodies needed to be stored somewhere else for the time being. This led to 13 of the bodies being held at a refrigerated warehouse of the local grocery store located at, you guessed it, 2223 Montana Ave. This address has had many different businesses come through its doors since this tragic story occurred, and with all these businesses, the same chilling stories have remained. Employees and customers have reported seeing the ghost of a man in a World War II era military uniform inside of this location. Considering the years it's been, it doesn't seem like he's going anywhere soon. In our number 8 spot today, we have Fort Peck Theater. This town dates back to the building of the Fort Peck Dam because the town was initially built to temporarily house the US Army Corps of Engineers, workers, and their families. In the 1930s, while building the amenities that would be needed, the Fort Peck Theater was also built in order to provide the residents with some entertainment. The theater is still used to this day, mostly for theatrical productions, but it's also full of paranormal entertainment as well. The theater is said to be haunted by a male spirit who appears wearing 1930s work clothes. Some visitors even report hearing sounds of men at work even when the theater is empty, and sometimes apparitions even appear in the dressing rooms. I just think that's the most theater thing ever. Ghosts in the dressing rooms? Shakespeare would love that. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Boulder Hot Springs Inn and Spa. This inn is located, of course, in Boulder, and it is actually a place that dates back to a time before Montana was even a state. This now historical landmark was initially created or recognized in 1881, and it was a place where businessmen, miners, and ranchers could all go, and here they could sort of mingle with each other. In this day and age, it is said that you might still be able to mingle with those guests from all of those years ago, as legend has it, this place is highly haunted. The most well known of the ghosts here, however, However, is that of a woman named Simone. It is said that Simone sadly had her life taken in the hotel and that her spirit now resides there. Visitors and staff alike have reported some really strange occurrences like extreme temperature shifts, drastic changes in energy, and even the sound of children and running through the halls when there is no one to be seen. In our number 6 spot today, we have St. Charles Hall. The oldest building on the Carroll College campus, which is located in Helena, is said to be St. Charles Hall, named after St. Charles Borromeo, who the college was actually initially named after. The building was originally constructed in 1904 and is mostly used as a dorm for students now, and those who reside in this dorm have quite the stories about the men's washroom on the fourth floor. This is said to have been the site of a horrible tale. The story goes that in 19 64, a student blacked out while brushing their teeth, and as they fell, they hit their head on the sink in the bathroom. They were treated at the local hospital, but unfortunately passed from their injuries and complications. After this, students using that bathroom began to experience strange happenings. A glance in the mirror would have them seeing a young man standing behind them with a head wound. Some would turn on the faucet and see blood flowing rather than water. After years of these reports, the bathroom has apparently now been locked up and is no longer in use, but people still report hearing scraping sounds from the inside. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Many Glacier Hotel. The Many Glacier Hotel has sat in its home on the eastern shore of Swift Current Lake for over a century now, and with history like that, there is bound to be many a ghost story. Other hotels in the area too have talks and tales of hauntings, but none seem as active as the Many Glacier Hotel. A ghost hunter by the name of Karen Stevens has taken to documenting some of these paranormal stories. One of the most frightening is the tale of a young boy who apparently witnessed a woman in a red dress standing in his hotel room. Guests aren't the only ones, however. Employees, too, have had their own encounters. The most active room in the hotel is apparently room 308, where you can not only hear strange noises, but also see apparitions that vanish into thin air just as quickly as they appeared. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Daly Mansion. This mansion is located in Hamilton, and in its previous life, it was the farmhouse to the Copper King Marcus Daly. He purchased this home in 
1886 and put it through some extensive renovations for it to become the sort of Georgian revival style that it still has today. In 1941, when Margaret Daly passed away, the house fell into disrepair after several years of being neglected, and this led to the state purchasing it in 1986. The state began restoration work on the property, and this is when many of the haunting tales started to spread. Smoking, of course, is not allowed in the home in this day and age, but many visitors to the home have experienced the distinct smell of a cigar smoke that seems to be coming from what was once the office of Marcus Daly. Not only this, but in the music room, there is a painting that just can't quite seem to stay on the wall, but no one has ever seen it fall off. Some even report to have seen the ghost of Mrs. Daly themselves. In our number three spot today, we have Grasshopper Glacier. This place is quite different than the others on this list, but for me, this place is the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, if you aren't a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip this one. If I were you, I would go. A glacier in Montana is the home to many grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, imagine heading to a glacier, but you forgot bug spray. What a fool. Oh wait, I forgot. Grasshoppers, they don't care. They aren't mosquitoes, they're absolute savages. Appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, the mile long glacier near Crook City holds the remains of extinct grasshoppers. The only thing worse is if they all came back to life. These guys likely were in the middle of travel when they found themselves stuck in a blizzard and now they're stuck for the foreseeable future. This is like a very forbidden version of one of those like scorpion lollipops. In our number two spot today, we have Virginia City. This town is often referred to as a ghost town due to the fact that as of 2020, the population sat just slightly over 200 people. And it is no surprise that this ghost town is said to be the home of some of Montana's most famous hauntings. Virginia City was first founded in 1863 by prospectors who originally named the area after the wife of Confederate President Jefferson Davis. The name was only changed when a judge, Judge G.G. Bissell, who was signing the town's registration, objected to the name and instead ruled it to be called Virginia. The town's population began to grow once people heard of the nearby gold deposits and discoveries. As the town grew, there wasn't sufficient law enforcement, which meant that there were a lot of vigilantes out there looking to take the law into their own hands. This led to many people who were suspected of being traveling robbers being hanged by said vigilante groups. By the time the 1940s rolled around, the town was in ruins. Charles and Sue Bovey ended up coming and buying up all the property they could, and the town now remains a tourist site, but not without some ghostly tales to spice up the story. One of the most well-known ghosts is that of a tall man in a blue Civil War soldier's coat, and he is often said to be found walking around the town's boardwalk at night, smoking as he strolls. Another one of the most famous sightings is that of a woman and a young girl. Little is known about their story, but they are often sighted by tourists. In our number one spot today, we have Deer Lodge. Deer Lodge, the old Montana Territorial Prison, now known as the Old Prison Museum, once held prisoners for over a hundred years. It apparently was quite a lousy place during that time that was full and overcrowded and had terrible food, and it was just a very dangerous place. Many inmates took each other's lives here, and with all of the stories from when this was a prison, it's just clear that if any place were to be haunted, it would absolutely be this one. There even was a huge riot that broke out in 1959. Since this prison closed down in the 1970s, the tales haven't become any less grim. Visitors report hearing eerie noises, and some have even felt the sensation of being touched. Many people believe that the ghost of convicted killer Paul Eitner, known as Turkey Pete, still haunts cell number one. He was incarcerated at the prison for 49 years before he passed away in 1967. Starting us off at number 10, The Hanging Jail. Actually called the Beauregard Parish Jail, it opened in 1915 and it was actually kind of a big deal because it had extraordinary amenities for a jail. Each cell had a window and a bathroom and cells on the top floor even had a skylight. But despite its beautiful architecture, it was also the site of Louisiana's first double execution. In 1926, two men were committed after killing and robbing a taxi driver and sentenced to be hanged. They claimed innocence but still the verdict passed and the two men died in the jail, giving it the infamous name. It remained open until 1981, and now a museum, it's believed to be haunted by the two men along with other inmates who felt they were unjustly put behind bars. Many have reported being pushed or hearing voices while visiting, and some have even captured photos of strange, inexplicable, shadowy figures lurking on the porch and window, leaving no other explanation than to assume the jail remains a haunted and terrifying place to visit. Coming in at number 9, 
Pleasant Hall. This story has two versions, so I will let you decide which one you think is true. Once upon a time, while attending the Louisiana State University, a resident tragically took her life in the now infamous Room 312. One story says the girl killed her boyfriend in a fit of rage and then, shocked at her actions, took her own life because she could not live with what she had done. The other story claims the girl jumped out of the window of her room and fell to her impending doom, terrifying the students on campus that witnessed the horrifying sight. But which one really happened? Well, it seems that is the hard part to find out. But what's not difficult to know is that the spirit of the girl remains, haunting Pleasant Hall to this day. Students have reported seeing her ghost roam the campus and hearing strange noises coming from the other side of room 312. And sometimes at night, when you least expect it, the door to room 312 will open and shut all on its own. Coming in at number 8, St. Louis Cemetery number 1. Regarded as the city of the dead, the St. Louis Cemetery number 1 holds more ghost stories than you'd want to encounter in a lifetime. In the span of a mere block, the cemetery has over 700 tombs and over 100,000 bodies are known to be buried at the site. Most famously, it is the burial site of Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau, the most revered and feared practitioner in New Orleans history. Reports of her ghost have detailed her in her signature red and white turban and claim she will suddenly appear out of nowhere and then vanish from plain sight just as fast. Visitors have experienced scratching, pinching, shoving, suddenly becoming ill and even hearing her haunting voice echo across the cemetery, sending many that have dared to visit running for the hills. So just be careful if you choose to stop by. If you aren't careful, she could curse you for life. Next up at number 7, the Calcasia Courthouse. The history of capital punishment is a torrid one, and as it turns out, this courthouse is actually famous for just that. Back in the 1940s, there was a woman named Tony Jo McHuston. She lived quite a tumultuous life involved in dr and her local brothel, but one day she fell in love with a man who frequented her establishment named Claude Henry. And so they got married and she started to really turn her life around. But after Claude was sent to jail for 50 years for killing someone, something inside Tony snapped. She planned to bust Claude out of jail with a friend, but in the process of stealing a car, killed the owner and left him in a ditch. She was caught and sentenced to death and would become the first first ever woman to be executed by the electric chair in Louisiana. It said her spirit still haunts the courthouse, locking doors and messing around with the filing systems during the day. But steer clear at night, as residents report you can smell her burning hair and hear her unruly screams echo through the streets. Coming in at number 6, Pea Farm. Nicknamed the Pea Farm, it is not actually a farm nor does it have anything to do with peas. It is, however, an old abandoned prison. The facility was in operation between 1905 to 1950 and rumor has it that life was incredibly rough and difficult at the pea farm for prisoners, even more so than your typical prison. Beatings and lashings were commonplace and even killing of prisoners was nothing to bat an eye at. So it's no surprise that those whose life may have ended here have stuck around, maybe trying to seek revenge on those who hurt them. Today the prison is strictly off limits to visitors, but those that walk past have reported hearing shrieks and other strange noises coming from inside the abandoned building. Maybe no one is allowed for a good reason. Next up at number 5, Bonnie and Clyde's Ambush Site. Maybe you've heard of the infamous couple, but just in case you haven't, let me catch you up. They were notorious bank robbers across Louisiana and Texas during the Great Depression in America and made quite a name for themselves. In recent years, it has been suggested their exploits were exaggerated, but one thing that wasn't is how they died. The day was May 23rd, 1934 and police from both Louisiana and Texas managed to corner them in their stolen car. Authorities fired more than a hundred bullets at the couple and as the story goes, you could hear Bonnie's scream from the next town over. Residents claim that if you visit the site of their death, the ghosts of the couple will make themselves well known to you. Apparitions have shown in photographs and some have even heard what they believe to be Bonnie's scream as she took her last few breaths on this earth. 
coming in at number four, Oak Alley. Once upon a time, it was one of the largest plantations in Louisiana. And just like every other of its kind, it has a dark past. Since its dark days, it has turned into a bed and breakfast and historical site, but the people that were tortured remain, haunting the ground and terrorizing visitors. Numerous accounts have claimed to hear unexplained sounds like blood curdling screams in the middle of the night or the sound of a horse drawn carriage clopping along the path. Some visitors have have even experienced being touched or grabbed by an unseen entity and one investigator got so scared he dropped his camera while trying to capture a spirit. Paranormal investigators have managed to capture several EVPs that indicate unhappy ghosts lingering the property and though no one has been hurt staying here yet, tread carefully as you never know just when you could set the spirits off. Coming in at number 3. Alice's grave. Alice died in the 19th century, and although she had a fairly normal life while alive, her death and afterlife were anything but expected. She was laid to rest in an above ground grave, but soon after, many of the townspeople began to question was the grave haunted, or worse? Was Alice a witch? As the legend goes, in the middle of the night, the large slab of marble covering her grave was removed on three separate occasions, and each time, her remains were left outside the grave. No one stepped forward admitting to have moved Alice or the slab, which led people to believe that Alice was a witch trying to escape her grave and haunt the town. Eventually, large iron bars were placed over the grave in an attempt to hold her spirit inside. But this hasn't seemed to stop her, as locals claim you can still see her wandering the cemetery at night. But just exactly what is she looking for? That is one of the many unanswered questions that leave visitors terrified, unsure if she comes in peace or if she is out for revenge. Next up at number 2, the Manchac Swamp. While many are familiar with the legendary voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, she was not the only one of her time. Julia Brown was a well respected healer and midwife who resided in a small village called Frenier. At first, she loved caring for her village, but after some time, she started to feel disrespected by her community, feeling as though they were taking her gifts for granted. Julia began scaring the village, telling them dooming predictions about their impending deaths, and the townspeople, unsure if she was placing a curse or foretelling their future, became very troubled. Shortly before her own death, she said, One day I'm gonna die and I'm gonna take all you with me. And just days after she was buried, three entire villages were destroyed by a hurricane and hundreds of lives were lost. To this day, many believe the spirit of Julia Brown haunts the swamp, and visitors have reported hearing blood curdling screams and the sound of her voice singing cryptic and frightening songs, terrifying all those that dare walk by. And last up in our number one spot, La Lorie Mansion. Arguably one of the most infamous buildings in all of Louisiana, La Lorie Mansion was once home to the cruel and torturous Madame Delphine La Lorie. Even in her time, she was regarded as a monster and was known to have her slaves taken from her on more than one occasion due to their outrageous mistreatment. In 1834, a fire broke out in her mansion, and when police and fire marshals arrived at the site, they found one of her slaves chained to the stove, claiming to have started the fire to try and take her own life to escape the cruelty. Another seven victims were found in her attic, suspended from the ceiling, mutilated and barely alive, stating to have been imprisoned for months. Once news broke out of her cruelties, citizens attacked the house and demolished everything they could. While the original building no longer stands, the grounds it stood on are some of the most haunted in all of Louisiana, as it's believed nearly 100 people lost their lives under Madame Delphine's cruel supervision. Visitors have reported feeling the violent touches of ghostly hands, and a medium that visited stated that there is a very dark demonic entity that resides within the building's walls. So just tread carefully. Carefully. Should you choose to visit, the spirits that live there are not too thrilled by visitors in their home. Number 10. Driscoll Hotel, Austin While there are many reportedly haunted hotels in Texas, this one seems to top many lists for the most ghostly activity. Most of this seems to stem from the very chilling stories of room 525. 
In the 1880s, there was a young couple that was having their wedding at the hotel. Or at least that was the plan. The groom got cold feet and left the bride at the altar. Now heartbroken, she ran upstairs to their suite, room 525, and took her own life. And it's said she still walks the halls in her long white gown. But that isn't the end of the story. Because in 1991, another bride was spurned at the altar. And after going on a shopping spree with the groom's stolen credit card, she too returned to room 525 and took her own life. Since then, guests have seen her carrying a pistol and walking into the room, all without ever opening the door. So don't stay Stay in room 525 or you may never check out. There's also an eerie painting that's said to be inhabited by the spirit of a young girl, the daughter of a senator, whose expression seems to change on its own. People who view the painting have said that they feel like they were floating off of the ground, though they remained on the floor. They also say that their equilibrium and balance was off for a few hours after looking at her. Number 9, USS Lexington, Corpus Christi. Now before I tell you about this spooky ship, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of our amazing videos. As a naval vessel that saw actual battle, there have been multiple lives that were lost on board, including that of an engine room operator who still roams the ship at night waiting for the battle to end. The crew of the ship have often reported flickering lights and doors slamming on their own, which given that this is a very well maintained historical site, you'd think that they would have found the cause by now. Maybe it's just the ghosts of sailors lost to time. Coming in at number 8, we have the Marfa Lights in, you guessed it, the town of Marfa. While there is so much beauty in the area and plenty of non-spooky reasons to visit, the main tourist attraction to this quaint little town are floating, sourceless lights that seem to change color and even move in the night sky. Many visitors make the journey at all times of year to see the lights, and there's even a yearly festival made in their honor. Reported since 1883 by people of all ages and professions, no one knows what these floating orbs are. They appear at random, but usually in the same area of the sky, and since there's so much open space and low light pollution, it's perfect for stargazing. Or seeing spooky orbs, I guess. <laughs> some say that these lights are UFOs, some say spirits, and others think that they're just headlights. All that I know is that if I see a mysterious floating orb, I'm going the other way. Number 7. Woman Hollering Creek, San Antonio. Said to be the home of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, this creepy creek leaves anyone who visits with a sense of dread. As the story goes, La Llorona was a woman who was distraught that her once doting, affectionate husband left her for another woman. And after confronting him and leaving the confrontation with cuts and bruises, she waded into the water, dressed in her best clothes, and drowned herself in the creek right after doing the same to the rest of her family. Her chilling screams for her children can be heard all the way from the highway, giving her and the creek its very apt name. Many people have felt themselves being drawn towards the water by ghostly voices, and some have even been tugged towards the bank of the creek. Perhaps it's La Llorona looking for her next victim. The screams heard and feelings of being pulled into the water have mostly been reported by younger people, making this all the more terrifying given what La Llorona did. Number 6, El Paso High School. Now, when you're thinking of haunted places, a school isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind, but this one has quite a story. In 1985, the graduating class received their yearbooks, and when basking in the nostalgia of their group photo, they noticed something odd. A woman who no one could identify was in the picture with them. Now, obviously, that would be quite concerning. I know I'd be freaked out if there was someone I'd never seen before standing next to me in a picture. The blurry apparition still has not been identified to this day, but some think it's a student who fell from a window years before who never got to graduate. I say give her the diploma. She's already in the yearbook. Sticking in El Paso, in our number 5 spot is the Plaza Theatre Performing Arts Center. As someone who loves the theatre, I try to see as many shows as I can, but I think I'll skip visiting this theatre, no matter how good the production is. Built in 1930 as a movie house, demolished for a parking lot in the late 80s, and rebuilt as a live theatre space, this building has seen many, many changes, but some things have stayed constant throughout its history. Many workers of the building have reported seeing a man in one of the box seats, in a tuxedo, smoking a cigarette. One crew member recalls seeing him after turning on the stage lights, sitting alone in the box, as though he'd been there for hours already before the lights came on. And when she saw the smoking man, he turned to her and said, We all have our time to die. 
and then threw himself headfirst over the balcony, vanishing before he could hit the ground. A former vice president of the theater also recalls seeing a ghostly girl bouncing a ball in the aisles of the theater and always staring. He also noticed that there was a rag doll that seemed to appear and disappear on its own, moving to locations that it couldn't have without someone's help. Even locked doors didn't seem to stop it from appearing in the projection booth. Number 4. Yorktown Memorial Hospital Established in 1951, this abandoned hospital has been named one of the most haunted places in America. And since over 2,000 patients are said to have died within its walls before it shuttered its doors in 1992, I can see why. Reports of apparitions of people in hospital gowns running through the corridors or hiding in rooms are numerous, along with moving wheelchairs, disembodied voices, and footsteps. But there are some who have even more chilling stories. While exploring the halls and rooms that have remained largely untouched since its closure, some ghost hunters have been touched, had their clothes tugged on, or even pushed to the ground while being given a ghostly warning. Some of the spirits are believed to be that of patients who had illegal medical experiments performed on them and lost their lives in the process, making for a very vengeful ghost. Number 3. The Screaming Bridge in Arlington On the night of February 4, 1961, six from the local high school were taking a drive after seeing a movie earlier in the evening. While driving down Bedford Road toward the rail crossing bridge, which had mysteriously been burned down a few years previous, only rebuilt earlier that year, they were startled by another car reversing and honking its horn wildly. This caused the driver to speed up out of fear and, not realizing that the bridge was out, the car careened over the edge and crashed into the other side of the ravine. Unfortunately, three of them lost their lives that night, and their screams of terror can still be heard by anyone traveling the renamed Greenbelt Road. The saddest part of this story is that the car that startled them was being driven by a man who had just barely avoided going over the edge of the broken bridge himself, and he was reversing and honking to warn them of the danger ahead. The entire area, now known as Death Crossing, is now blocked off and no traffic travels through. At number 2 on our list, we have La Carafe in Houston. This historic bar, built originally as a bakery in 1860, has been serving patrons for decades. But many come not only for the drinks, but for a paranormal experience. Bartenders and visitors alike have seen apparitions of a hulking man walking upstairs and hearing his giant footsteps pacing the floor. No one knows who this may be, but some say he died there from some nefarious means. The former manager of the bar can also be seen staring out of the top floor window, looking over his patrons and ensuring they're having a good time. And he seems a bit more friendly. <laughs> However, there are some that report the sounds of a body being dragged across the floor above, but when the sound is followed, nothing's there. Makes you wonder what happened upstairs. And since it's one of the oldest buildings in the city that's been in continuous use, it's become a tourist hotspot and a historical site. Personally, I won't be stopping in for a drink anytime soon, no matter how good the cocktails are. And finally, number one, the Alamo. While students are taught to remember the Alamo, they don't really teach about all of the spirits who can never forget. In the infamous battle, thousands of soldiers lost their lives, and many were dumped into mass graves and others left to rot out in the sun, so it makes sense that you'd have some pissed off ghosts wandering the ground. There have been countless reports of soldier apparitions walking with weapons in hand, taking their usual patrol, and even full platoons screaming and charging into battle. Even in the afterlife they couldn't get away from war, and so they continue to fight their invisible enemy. There are also accounts of a small blonde haired boy hiding in multiple places where the gift shop now stands, so make sure to pick up your haunted keychains. While the buildings are beautiful to look at and the area is interesting to explore, the history can leave one with a haunting feeling. And with all those spirits around, I'd be careful touring here, especially at night. Number 10, Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. I figured I'd get this one out of the way off of the top. I've talked about this a few times on my home channel, Top 5 Scary, and it's worth shouting out over here as well. Zach Baggins is the famed paranormal investigator from Ghost Adventures, and he spent most of his adult life collecting and hunting things beyond the veil, and he's put it all under one roof for your pleasure. The building itself is said to be haunted, and to Vegas residents, stories go that it used to be home in the late 70s to all kinds of satanic and and dark rituals. Since then, it's been rumored to be haunted, 
No doubt why Baggins wanted to open it there. Baggins collection boasts some truly impressive relics like the Dybbuk box, thought to be one of the most cursed objects in the entire world. Visitors to the museum report all sorts of unease, seeing strange shadows and figures while they navigate the halls. The museum offers tours for fledgling ghost hunters and even offers nighttime tours where you have a free roam of the facility with nary but a flashlight to guide you if you're feeling brave. And if you're feeling truly brave, keep clicking through on Most Amazing and watch all of the fantastic top 10 scary content we've got. And if you got a little room left over, you should check out Top 5 Scary. I hear some of the hosts there are just lovely. Number 9. La Palaza Mansion. The La Palaza Mansion is a now abandoned, allegedly haunted mansion in Las Vegas that was once home to a notorious mobster known as Tony the Ant Spilotro. Over the years, there has been a score of rumors and hearsay out of the Palaza Mansion as to what kind of violence has happened inside those walls and inside the secret tunnels that are built underneath it, as well as the secret rooms around. It makes a good lick of sense that a place where mobsters would meet and greet probably saw its fair share of dark dealings. Various inhabitants over the years have complained of spirits on multiple occasions. One particularly vivid story details someone being choked after a glass of wine exploded mysteriously. As well, female guests have reported hearing hooting and hollering while showering at the Palazzo Mansion. Pervert ghosts. Yeah, learn something every day. The mansion is closed, but it recently went up for sale again, but it's been struggling to find a buyer. I guess no one really wants to buy a home where you know a ghost is gonna be watching you use the loofah. Number eight, the Flamingo Resort. The Flamingo was the prized property and hotel of Bugsy Siegel, the legendary New York mobster who is the undisputed first king of Las Vegas, as he was influential and key to the development of the Las Vegas Strip, becoming the beloved den of sin that we know today. Unfortunately for Bugsy, he didn't get to enjoy his time with his precious flamingo very long as he was assassinated by a rifle in his own home six months after its grand opening. Well, if you believe the rumors, maybe Bugsy keeps finding his way back to his favorite spot as there are reports of all sorts of sightings of that checkered coat. Fun little aside, little trivia for some of the gamers out there, the villain of Fallout New Vegas, Benny, was directly based on Bugsy down to the trademark jacket. Anyway, guests of the Flamingo Hotel have reported hearing strange whisperings at night during their rooms and claim that Spectral apparitions have been seen in the presidential suite, Bugsy's old personal room in the hotel. There have been reports of seeing the notorious criminal in the garden as well as the chapel. Perhaps he's still got unfinished hotel business to take care of. Or maybe he just loves that spot so much he can't move. Number 7. Pioneer Saloon The Pioneer Saloon is a little bit outside the strip proper in the town of Good Springs. And I hate to bring it up again so soon, but if you're a gamer with a keen eye and you're wondering why you recognize this saloon, yep. That is where the tutorial from Fallout New Vegas happens, and it is 100% of why I can't stop banging on about it in this video. But, besides being one of the places that Courier 6 first ever stepped foot and began their journey, it's also one of Vegas' most haunted attractions. The Pioneer Saloon is the oldest bar operating in Nevada, and as such, one of the most haunted for years and years of stories. It's said that the wife of Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, can be seen wandering around the saloon at night looking for her husband to console him, but she's not the only one. There's there's rumors of a spirit of a kindly old prospector who sits at the back of the bar in the wee hours just to make sure ain't nobody causing no trouble. Easy Pete. Lastly, there's a spirit of an old western bar brawler by the name of Paul Kosky who was sent six feet under when he was caught cheating at a hand of cards. The coroner's report for him is posted on the wall. They say near the dead of night you can see a figure of an old gunslinger bleeding out of his side watching the bar. Number six, the Mob Museum. Hey, uh, there, there ain't nothing to see here. Move along, move along at this one. There's nothing to see at point number six. Well, actually there is, quite a lot. The Mob Museum is a showcase to the people that made Las Vegas what it is today. Gangsters, crooks, criminals, and all. The museum serves as a monument to all things crooked and corrupt, and is built in the old Las Vegas courthouse, where several of the people who are featured in the museum receive the sentence that would change their lives, so to speak. As well, one of the most prominent features of the museum is a swath of the brick wall from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, still riddled with bullet holes from the infamous Bloody Clash. Employees who work at the Mob Museum claim that in their time, it's not uncommon to see shadowy figures wandering through at night, quite possibly the lost souls of old mobsters who never got a peaceful rest, probably due to, you know, being 
perforated by bullets. Number 5. The Luxor Resort The Luxor Resort has been host to paranormal rumors pretty much since it was constructed. Maybe it's because it was built to look like an ancient Egyptian tomb. Maybe it's the gigantic black pyramid with a giant light atop its peak that looks like it's a dark temple that's attracting all of the malevolent energy in the world inside the Luxor. Could be that. An unknown number of construction workers died during its construction. And shortly after its opening, two guests jumped from the balconies. You should know too as well. The Luxor is also home to a massive collection of artifacts recovered from the wreck of the Titanic, all the way up to a giant piece of the bulkhead complete with a piece of the window. You gotta imagine if there wasn't already enough evil energy inside that building, bringing in a bunch of relics from the Titanic has gotta push it overboard. No pun intended, wow. Employees have reported that deceased passengers from the Titanic came with their relics, appearing, disappearing, and making their presence known. Some rooms in the resort are even modeled directly after rooms in the Titanic, where people report increased spiritual activity. Maybe they feel at home. Number 4. Fox Ridge Park You know, it's not all glitz and grime all the time in Las Vegas. There still has to be a community, you know? The people have to live somewhere. Can't all just be wall-to-wall -wall casinos. There has to be room for grocery stores and places for people to play. Perhaps once you've had your fill of shooting craps, you can take a walk down to Fox Ridge Park, a small little playground in Henderson, the city that neighbors Las Vegas. The story goes that a long time past, a boy was run over by the park, and his soul has been bound to it ever since. People report seeing the swing set moving when no one's around or no wind could be blowing it, and even outright saying that they see spectral apparitions. He's apparently very angry, however, and I never quite got over his condition. And it's been said that he takes the form of a demonic entity or some monstrous specter to would be paranormal investigators who go and disturb him. So it might be best to leave this one to the pros and check out some of the other stuff on the list. Tell Zach Baggins about this one. Number three, Rhyolite Ghost Town. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but we'll go through it anyway. After you've made a day seeing the sights of Las Vegas, consider taking a road trip outside of the strip to Rhyolite, an abandoned ghost town just outside. It used to be a prospering mining community during the gold rush, but was abandoned altogether in the panic of 1907. It still stands now as a monument to an America long gone, a town frozen in amber, perfectly preserved. Even just looking at it, pictures of it is kind of giving me the willies, you know? You look at it and it feels like things should be moving and bustling, but instead it's just a graveyard. You can wander around the remnants of the old town, seeing the desolate ruins of a bank and a jail. Because of its eerie, abandoned nature, it's a very popular spot for paranormal enthusiasts to scout out to try and see if maybe, just maybe, they can catch a bona fide ghostly gunslinger or vanquished varmint still wandering around on this mortal coil. Number 2. Hoover Dam Hoover Dam? What? Really? Well, yeah, you would be surprised how many rumors and ghost stories I found about Hoover Dam while researching for this video. So many of them, they ought to call it the Hoover Dam. Thank you folks, thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll be here all week. Not really, just this video. But you can catch me on Top 5 Scary if you liked me. In the years since the impressive dam's construction, it's seen its fair share of fatal jumpers who chose the iconic landmark as their last destination. As well, over 100 workers were fatally injured in the construction of the dam between 1931 and 1936. Some visitors to the dam report hearing dripping water and what sounds like malfunctioning equipment despite everything working in order. As well, some of the employees who work at the dam complain of tools missing or things malfunctioning, not working properly during the lower levels. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. When Hoover Dam began to rise, so did the waters of Lake Mead. The town of St. Thomas had to be evacuated. After the water levels of Lake Mead had calmed, and after 70 years of the water receding, the ghost town of St. Thomas was officially unearthed. While the town was evacuated under government order, there's no proof one way or the other to say that everyone did. So it's entirely possible that some residents of St. Thomas could have been trapped there, and their souls now doomed to the dam forever, alongside jumpers and poor workers, making it a real hot spot for paranormal activity. Luckily, I have to imagine a dam that big has got to be keeping some of it in, right? And finally, the number one most haunted spot in Vegas is Bali's Las Vegas Resort. In 1980, a raging fire scorched the tower of the original MGM Grand Resort. It was an absolutely dreadful disaster that claimed the lives of 85 people and badly injured many, many more. The building was restored and sold and renamed to Bali's in 1985. But given the building's treacherous backstory, it's no surprise how many guests complain about paranormal experiences there. Guests who stay in the original refurbished tower complain of overwhelming smell of smoke 
smoke or the sounds of people screaming throughout the night. Others notice that on higher floors, the furniture will move unexpectedly, or windows have been shut or even locked that can be found open. It's thought that these are the spirits of those on the higher floors desperate to escape, not knowing they never will. There's a famous ghost in Bali's residents claim to see of an old woman who sits at a slot machine on the casino floor, blankly pulling the lever and idly playing calmly until she bursts into flames without making a noise and then vanishing in the blink of an eye. She only appears for seconds at a time, but she's been purportedly seen many, many times. Ugh.